Uh, yeah, this is the part three of the BR 21 ton mineral wagon saga. In the previous episodes, we saw the original uh, diagram 110 uh, vehicles, riveted bodies, and in the following episode, the diagram 107, uh, welded body vehicles. I thought when I planned this series or started this series, I was going to have to do an enormous amount of cut and, uh, cutting and shutting of various different kits to get this one. But then a little while in, I heard rumours that um, 5, 7 and 9 were going to restart production of their kit. And that is essentially the Robert, Roger Chivers range or Chivers fine lines. So I held off and true to the rumours, the kits are back in production and on sale. Uh, there's a link in the description to the website. This is a new brand of kit for me to deal with and I was quite surprised and pleased at the amount of detail and components that were in the in the packaging. British Railways built two versions of the vacuum braked 21 ton mineral wagon and I'm going to be doing both of those versions today and it's all about this thing here that the cocktail stick is pointing to but more of that later now this wagon is like all the other wagons really it's just a box on a on a standard chassis with detail variation being an older kit it had the same issues with pretty much all the other ones really there was a few mould lines that needed sanding down and some ejector pins that needed filling. Again, the instructions are mostly written text with only one or two exploded diagrams. Most of the parts are handed, which means it's, well, it's, it's not difficult to put them in the wrong order, but if you do, you end up with uh, mistakes or a wagon that's back to front, so to speak. Up to this point, the wagons are pretty much identical. The only difference is being on the brake gear on the underframe. Now, I am aware that there is a company, Rumney Models, that do like a, an additional underframe for the 119 diagram. There'll be a link in the description for that down below. To create the 119 diagram, wagon I had to then fabricate a manual changeover lever after I'd carved off the self-adjusting brake cylinder mechanism and the lever is a handrail from my last project which was the Lima class 31s. Brass bearings were then super glued into the W irons and when I put the wheel sets in after I'd put the other side on, the other sole bar, there was not the usual, as with the Parkside kits, the fit issues that are normally associated. And everything was square straight from the off. So there was no fettling with ride issues or anything. It was all dead flat and all dead square. I was really pleased. Now this kit comes with two different styles of roller bearing and I'm sure I'll get told off for putting the wrong one on the wrong diagram wagon. I don't have the book that tells me which ones go on which one. Does that mean I can claim a point in the in the battle against being called a rivet counter? I think I can. I applied the underframe detail next and namely the brake shoes. Now because these are class brakes they needed they had a seam line on the inside and it needed just filing off because it was very tight on the wheels that I used which were Hornby. Now that seam line and a little bit of paint would be enough to effectively seize the axle, seize the wheels from turning. So all the information that I'm about to tell you will be written in the description and links to sources will be down there as ever as well. After the construction of the MDO versions, the 107 and 110 diagrams, there was a 10 year gap from 1952 to 1961 when the first of these wagons were built. 
the first of which being the diagram 1119. And a thousand of those were built with the manual brake rate changeover levers. And the diagram 1120, there was, I think, because my sources are contradictory, 3,950 of those built with the self-adjusting vacuum brakes. They were ordered and built from 1961 to 1962. The last ones possibly entering service in 1963. I think I'd be right in saying as well that when, after introduction, they would be among the first of the fully fitted block trains operating on mainly uh, coal exports in the South Wales area. With construction completed, it was time to head to the spray booth, where the under well the whole thing was given a uh, an undercoat of a black colour, shall we say? I think it was Revel Number no. Nine Anthracite, I think, and that's because my black had gone a bit lumpy, and I didn't want to put it through the airbrush. Followed up, of course, by uh, a, a nice coat of bauxite. With the decals applied and sealed in with a couple of coats of uh, varnish, it was then time to paint the buffer shanks, which is one of my pet hates. Not for painting, but for observing other modellers getting it a little bit wrong. Remember, if they're not hydraulic buffers, they haven't got silver shanks. They were then given a dark wash with my normal MIG ammo dark wash followed up by weathering powders. Now there's two more episodes to this series and they'll be covering the 21 tonne mineral wagon conversions. So again we'll wait until we've done the, the complete lot and then we'll put them on the railway and run them all round together. And ordinarily this would be the end of the video but I'm going to probably embarrass myself and try to explain the differences on the brake gear. And I'll start by saying if we take all the variables out of the equation like engines and other wagons and just focus on the two wagons that we've got and when I say apply the brakes that means fully apply the brakes. We'll start with the 119 diagram uh, wagon. Uh, and obviously it's going to have two positions with the manual brake rate changeover suite lever and that will be empty and loaded. So empty, it will be travelling along and the brakes will apply and it will stop somewhere here. Now I'm going to use these steel coils as a load, forgive me, they're just easy to see. And we just carry on and then apply the brakes. And because the wagon is now heavier, it takes a lot longer to stop crashing into my laptop. Now, if we go back and imagine that we've operated the brake rate changeover lever into the loaded position, we'll go along, apply the brakes, and it will stop in a reasonable distance. Now, the downside to this system is if the train preparer or shunter forgets to then manually change it back over into empty once it's been unloaded, the chances are the wagon will then be going along, the brakes will apply and there will be that much force applying the brakes that it will uh, seize up the axle and the wheel will just skid on top of the rails. Now the development of the 119 obviously was the 120's uh, diagram wagon and that's has the self-adjusting brake system which is uh, a mechanical linkage off of the suspension and theoretically it doesn't matter whether it's empty loaded or half empty or anywhere in between it should when going along and the brakes are fully applied stop in exactly the same position every time no matter how much weight or commodity is in it I'm pretty sure that all vehicles today, whether they be wagons or coaches or multiple units, they all have some sort of brake 
self-adjusting brake system which means whether they've got a hundred people in them or no people in them a hundred tons of commodity or none in them at all they should theoretically all stop in the same place with the same brake force i hope that's made it clear i tried writing this all down before i sort of started doing this but it made even less sense on paper than what it does actually just talking about it. After doing all this, I then subsequently found out that the 119 diagram vehicle, the one with the brake rate changeover switch, had two vacuum cylinders, and that kind of makes sense. Anyway, it, I then had to though um, retrofit the extra one on. The next build video that I do will be uh, XP64 coaches but the video before that is going to be something completely different.